So yeah, this is not a video we thought we'd be making today, but a lot of people have commented things about the iPods for a long time and I very rarely try to talk about them because I always say they need to be discontinued. They need to be stopped. The time of the iPods has come, but I've never really made a formal video about it. So we went ahead and dedicated ourselves and got the cheapest one we could get, the standard 32 gigabyte configuration iPod Touch from an Apple store. This was not used. You can walk in and still ask for this today. And a lot of people still are very, very passionate passionate about these. I see your comments. I see your requests. You want Apple to update this product line for some reason. This product line that never got Touch ID, never got any form of biometrics, and yet is still being supported with iOS 12. Meaning that even if Apple doesn't discontinue this, and you can buy the iPod Touch in 2019, for the majority of 2019, this will still be running the latest version of iOS 12. I come to ask myself, why is Apple still doing this? Headphone jacks, ear pods that have headphone jacks on them, and from the looks of it, not even a laminated display. Why could Apple still be doing this? Well, we have a couple theories. Many people would always say that maybe it's good for kids. You know, it's very cheap. And still to this day, this is the cheapest device you can get that still runs iOS at $200. The next available iPhone is $350. Or if you want to count the cheapest iPad, that starts at $330 or $300 for education. But this is obviously not an iPad, a very different product, a pocket product, if you will. But my complaint as to why this still exists and why Apple needs to discontinue it is for all the things you get for just an extra $150 or an extra $100 compared to what this is worth, 200. And in case you were wondering, yes, you still can get it in 128 gigabytes form, which may seem silly for an iPod, but when you think about it, this does not have any form of cellular connection. Meaning if you're out on the go, whatever you have downloaded, that's what you're using until you find a Wi-Fi network. The 128 gig you can check for yourself still costs $300 for an iPod touch in 2018. After WWDC 18, no price reduction still available and the website is drastically dated. They just decided not to update it when you're checking out an iPod Touch. It looks like retroapple.com. And just like the iPod Touch, they have not updated the website since. But anyway, many people say these are good for kids because they're cheap and easy. But my argument is, wouldn't parents or people who want their kids to have ways to communicate with them, ways to access them, wouldn't they want them to be able to communicate wherever they are, whether they're at school or at a friend's house? This pretty much allows your kid to just contact you if they need to if they're at the house because you can connect to it via Wi-Fi and that's it. Unless you want to get your kid something that you don't actually want them to communicate with you with and not have it be a tool at all and just be a toy, this is still rocking an A8 chip. Meaning that if you were crazy enough to buy an iPod and a HomePod at the same time, both of these products have the same CPU even though one of them is running full-fledged iOS and one of them is just a smart speaker. That's what kind of kills the idea for me as why iPod touches are still good for some people. If you're out there, I'd love to hear your arguments as to why you like it down in the comments below, but I will give some credit to the design. It has a very thin camera bump, but it is still there. But overall, this product is so incredibly light that if you put it in your pocket, it honestly feels like nothing's in your pocket. I'm so used to larger iPhones or thicker iPhones that when they're in my pocket and I feel for them, it's very noticeable. When I put this iPod Touch in my pocket, it's so thin, it's so light, it's kind of hard to notice. It's basically the thickness of the Apple TV remote. And while while this is a very underpowered device, 1080p at 30 FPS recording maximum, surprisingly has slow mode built into the camera app, which is possible. But overall, pretty basic camera features, pretty basic CPU with an A8 chip. Nothing really too fancy here, but they are able to put iOS 12 on a device this incredibly thin, this light, alongside a fairly decent battery life. It is kind of impressive. Even though this has not been updated in years, the fact that an entire device that, with the exception of, you know, no vibration motor, no cellular, no fancy camera features, but the fact that they're able to stuff all of that tech within a device that thin, you gotta admit, is kind of impressive. And if you ever go to an Apple store, I recommend you just try holding the iPod Touch for a second and realize how light this is. And Steve Jobs loved light and thin things. And I feel like if he would have been around to see this iPod Touch, he probably would have really liked it. It is the only product red Apple product in which you will get chafered edges along the side so far, given this iPod still has a flat top with a curved back, unlike all our iPhones now, which kind of have have curved tops and curved backs, which are more comfortable, I guess. None of that here. And the amazing thing about this iPod Touch is we bought it brand new from Apple and it ships with iOS 11. We were able to set it up just like you would set up a normal iPhone. It pops up on a regular iPhone and says, set up your iPod automatically. Just like you would set up an Apple Watch or an iPad. It's amazing to me they have that built in because it's like, so you already have an iPhone or you already have an iPad and now you're setting up an iPod. Why would you need an iPod if you already had these things? But it is possible, it is doable. The speaker on it 
is pretty loud and not very clear at all. And just by holding it wrong, you can basically cancel out all audio. And the most simple way to describe this thing is basically it's a toy. It feels so cheap. It feels so small. Well, yet still being rather impressive that they can make a machine with a working front facing and rear facing camera and all the features I've talked about within a design like this. It makes me wonder if they have a giant stockpile of iPod touches and when there's a new iOS update, do they open them up, update them and put them back in? Or do they just not make a stockpile and they only make more when there's demand for more? And since there was demand for more, just a little bit, they decided to swap out the SSDs with drives running iOS 11. In fact, it was running iOS 11.3.1. Obviously we've put iOS 12 on it now, which enables the features of bedtime notifications. If you get many notifications on your iPod, I guess they will be grouped, but I guess one benefit of iOS 12 is that you can hold the space bar in the keyboard and still use the cursor like a trackpad, which you couldn't do on your iPod Touch before. So if you have an iPod Touch out there, you're still getting features with iOS 12, which is yet to come out. Something amazing still that Apple holds to the iPod Touches that they made sure they didn't have as kind of like an added bonus to iPhones is that in the battery app, you cannot enable battery percentage. Control Center doesn't show your battery percentage. It's not a toggle within the battery option. You literally just have to rely on that icon in the top right corner for your battery life. You don't know if it's 20%, 30%, 47. It's just on that icon. And just like old iPads, which they didn't fix on the iPods, they felt the need to put the word iPod in the top left corner. It just always says that. It's always there, just in case you forgot what you were using. The home button is still, of course, physical. And from what I believe, it's actually still the only Apple product that ships with a home button that has the old-fashioned app icon on the home button. Still in Apple stores, still available to buy today. And there's a home button without Touch ID on it, which since the iPhone 5 has been discontinued, as well as the 5C, that makes this the sole survivor of the traditional classic non-biometric home button. Another interesting thing about this version of the iPod Touch is that it still has exclusive wallpapers that you cannot get on other iOS devices. Under the stills option, you still have your classic new iOS 12 wallpaper, as well as a couple of older ones. But near the bottom, they still have kind of the dotted wallpapers that you cannot get on iPhones or iPads. They were able to put iOS 11.3 on the iPod Touch, yet keep the exclusive wallpapers that come with the new colors for the iPod Touch, as in blue, pink, gold, space gray, which look really, really cool, I might add, and you can probably Google them to add them to your iPhone. But I still think it's funny that they have these built in, and there are still software exclusives to the iPod Touch that your $1,000 iPhone or $1,000 iPad can't get, but this $200 iPod can. Of course, no 3D Touch because there's no taptic engine or even vibration motor of any kind, but just like an iPad, holding the icons in Control Center still open things, even though there's really no point to because you've got the four icons up here, which are, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, airdrop, because when you're on an airplane, you wanna make sure your iPod turns off Wi-Fi because that will hurt the plane, but you can hold on it and it opens up nothing else. It's all the options are still there, I guess. But with the addition of iOS 12, do not disturb, you still get your options to have do not disturb on for one hour till tomorrow morning or until you leave this location. The reason I'm going over all these things is I just think it's hilarious that an iPod that is basically on the brink of being discontinued at any day now, it probably could be canceled and we'd all be like, yeah, that's fair, it's about time. And yet with iOS 12, which is yet to come out, it will still be getting a couple of new features. Not big ones by any means, but still be getting a couple. The only possible explanation I could see with maybe them sticking around with the iPod Touch is Apple's rearranging themselves as a services company. While it is the last surviving iPod, there's no more Nanos or Shuffles or Classics that are being sold anymore. This is the last one since it has Wi-Fi and iOS, it can run Apple Music. And Apple's probably really key on making sure Apple Music gets on as many devices as possible given it convinced Apple to make an Android app. Like that happens every never. So they are like, well, I guess you can use Apple Music on your iPod Touch. So we'll keep supporting it for a little while longer. My guess is that 12 months from the release of this video, this will not be supported anymore. This will likely be discontinued. But you know, I think a year ago, I wouldn't have expected this to still be available at Apple stores and it still is. So maybe the iPod will surprise us. I do not think there's going to be a refresh of any kind. I don't think you're gonna see some glass backed, true tone, taptic engine, touch ID or whatever concept you can think of. While we can all dream and imagine what it would be, I'm pretty sure this is Apple's inventory just kinda getting flushed out. They're like, let's get as many of these out of the factory as we can and then shut it down when sales truly hit a record low. And because of people like me, I'm making Apple think, eh, maybe we should keep selling it. But yeah, a couple of things that you take for granted, no silencer switch on this one.
one is still able to keep the flashlight if you need it but all of the options in control center that we got with ios 11 are still there like screen recording you can have this as a dedicated apple tv remote if you still have one lying around and very bizarrely the wallet app like, we saw that and thought, can you use Apple Pay on your iPod Touch? How does that even work? Turns out you can't put cards on it. It's just for tickets or boarding passes and things like that. If you don't own an iPhone, but you wanted your iPod Touch to have your boarding pass for your airplane, the wallet app is on the iPod Touch, even though the moment you leave your house, it's probably not going to be connected to the internet. So that catches you up to date on what's happened with the iPod Touch. We figured we'd make a video about this because we almost never talk about the iPod in this channel, and it was a big piece of Apple's history, but I think it's safe to say I think this will be the last iPod I ever buy. My first Apple product of all time was an iPod Nano 4th generation, then my first iOS device of all time was the iPod Touch 4th generation, and then after that I finally switched to an iPhone 5 and I actually got cellular and stuff, but I don't think we'll ever be unboxing or talking about the iPod Touch in a dedicated video from here on out, unless Apple really surprises us in a crazy way. So what do you guys think of the current day iPod Touch? Should Apple discontinue it? Does it have no purpose anymore? Let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.